Natasha again. Alright, so back with another video. I know I've been MIA. Don't kill me. But you know, your girl been trying to get her life together over here. Alright, so um, if you don't know, I have been applying to be a flight attendant. So as of today, I just got my CJO from SkyWest Airlines. Pretty much I just wanted to come to you and just pretty much just tell you what my journey was for SkyWest Airlines in particular. And then I'll make a couple other videos about um, some of the other companies that I applied for. I applied for 10 different airlines, y'all. 10. And I'm just now getting a CGA. So how it all started was um, it was actually the day before my anniversary. So um, on April 25th, I went on SkyWest's um website and you know something just was like girl just go see what you know sky west has going on so i was like okay nobody else is getting back to me quick enough so it's like okay you know i need to speed this process up so like i said i went on sky west um website and it said that they had a recruitment they had open recruitment april 26th in nashville so i was like okay nashville you know it's like three hours from here maybe three and a half so i was like cool you know i can do that i was like but it's tomorrow so i was like jesus i gotta hurry up and get ready you know make sure i dress professionally all this other kind of stuff right you know find some information about the company all of that because i don't know what's gonna happen at you know of course the interview so what i did was y'all i applied that same day like literally I, well, I applied the day before so on the 25th is the day i applied um and submitted everything in the second and third so i didn't get a confirmation email and well i got a confirmation email saying they got my application however i didn't receive the actual invite for the recruitment until a few days after my interview so I went on to one of the Facebook pages. I'll link it down below the group that I'm a part of. So I went to the page and I was like, hey, you know, if I applied before one of the open recruitment um, events the day before, I was like, can I still go? And people was like, oh, yeah, 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 like, go, go, go. So I was like, cool. So the 26th, you know, came. I made sure I left that. I left around 11 that morning and the recruitment started at 6, but they said it opened at 5. So what I did was I... Um, I was like, okay, well, um, let me get there a little early, you know, that way I can get me some lunch, you know, prepare or whatever, you know, so I'm not too, too nervous. And, you know, um, you know, at least I have my 60 second speech ready. Okay, so what I did find out, um, Glassdoor is a lifesaver. I'll link that down below as well. So Glassdoor told me that pretty much you need to have a 60 second speech prepared as to why you want to be a flight attendant or why you would make a great flight attendant for SkyWest Airlines is, it, is the question that they asked. So... I was like, okay, well, you know, um, I think, you know, I can do that, right? So, um, had me a little speech or something, you know, I had, I didn't write it down. I just kind of ran through my mind, you know, like, okay, I've done other um, virtual interviews, you know, that ask that exact same question. You know, I'm just going to use a lot of the stuff that I use from there and, you know, just, you know, repeat the same thing because I think it's a pretty good answer. So, I was like, okay. Um, so, I also met a girl, um, Crystal. Hey, Crystal. So um, I met Crystal on the Facebook page and me and her actually linked up in Nashville and, you know, we went to the event together. Y'all, when I tell you, it was already kind of foggy when I got there. It just wasn't the best day. So what I had on was I had on a, a burgundy like uh, vest and then underneath it, I just had on a black shirt and then I had on a black pencil skirt and then I had on some black heels. So the shoes weren't really, they weren't really like the chunky, like grandma, like professional heels. They were a little skinny, but they weren't not stilettos. Okay. So they could definitely be pulled off as like a professional look as well. So they were like, I think at, I think they might've been a little taller than three inches to be honest, but still I'm really short. So maybe it didn't really come off that way. So anyways, so um, we got there to the hotel. Uh, we sat outside. We, you know, we kind of pitched what we were going to say to each other. And we was like, okay, good. You know, you sound good. You sound good. Or maybe you should say this. Maybe you should say that. So we did that. And y'all, I kid you not. I got out of the car and it was like, I looked at my legs like, oh my God, I did not shave. Like y'all, my legs were hairy as can be. Like I thought it was like something on my skirt that kept like touching my legs no while it was like the wind blowing my little hair like it was bad but anyways then after that i get out the car y'all i kid you not i bust my ass like y'all i couldn't even i can't even say bust my butt because it wasn't even it was worse than that like 
all of this was just wet skinked up like it just was not okay and crystal was like oh my god girl you okay like she helped me up and everything girl you were the mvp that day i'm here to tell you so anyway so um like I said, we, you know, I got my life together. And then after that, um, we had to have a resume. Um, that was the only thing you needed. Um, some people said, you know, bring a passport just in case or bring a driver's license. You didn't need any of that. I did bring like a black bag. I know if you watch some of the YouTube videos, whatever, they'll tell you like that's something that they can carry it throughout the airport. So I did have like a nice black bag. I had my hair pulled back like what you see right now. I had the red lip on, you know, I had a little bit of makeup on, not really much because I left my makeup at home. I was supposed to do it at the hotel. So, um, I pretty much just added a red lip and then I had some powder in my purse and I just put powder on and that was it. So, um, like I said, I had my resume and I had my, um, passport in there and I also had my wallet as well in the little purse. And then I had my phone, but that was on silent. And then when I got inside, I put it on do not disturb. So I wouldn't have any issues. So, um. And I believe I had a watch on as well. Like a watch is like a really, really big thing. Um, I'll make another video as far as like some of the do's and don'ts or whatever of uh, going to your face to face. So anyway, so um, went inside and, um, you know, so the thing with SkyWest is you need to get there as early as possible. If they say that open doors open at 5 p.m., you need to be there at 4.45, okay? Like waiting for the doors to open. And the reason why I say that is because that's the order that you go in so that you're not there all day so if the doors open at five o'clock be there at 5 45 um get there you know sit sit around chill if you have to until five o'clock at five o'clock you need to be up there um whether we're, where they're gonna there's a specific room that you'll be in and there will be someone sitting at the door she was at like a little table and you sign in so when you sign in you know she writes on your name and then you also give her your resume as well right so um, that is the order that you will go in as far as pitching what you need to say your your sixty second spiel, right? So what you the reason why you want to go one, want to be one of the first ones is because you know you don't want to sound repetitive because all those that are gonna come after you are gonna sound pretty much repetitive. So. Um, like I said, you know, you want to be one of the first ones, you know, like, oh, wow, she said this, she said that, she said this, she said that. Like, oh, wow, she is on it. You know, like, that's the girl you want to be while you're in there. Now, so me personally, we got there, I think, at like 5.30ish, 5.35. We sat in the car, like I said, pitched what we needed to pitch. And, you know, I had my little catastrophe outside and then we went inside. So, and then I had to use the bathroom as well, but Crystal went on ahead and went up. So I came up after and I think I got there like 5.50. And, you know, I turned in everything I needed to. And they also, as soon as you turn in your resume, they also um, give you a height test. Now, mind you, y'all, I'm like barely five foot. Like, I barely made it. With the, And they make you take your, your shoes off, you know, to make sure that you are um, at the height requirement. So I was, so I, you know, was able to go forward. So when you get inside of that room, you need to speak to ev any and everybody. I will say this again, you need to speak to any and every body. You need to speak to all of the recruiters and you need to speak to as many candidates, if not all, in, um, as possible. And the reason why I say that is because they are watching. Like I know it sounds cliche, you've probably seen other videos as well, but I'm telling you, they are watching and they will remember you. So the lady who was taking our resumes what i did was i introduced myself to her and then i kind of told her my little story outside it kind of made us laugh you know and therefore we were able to build you know some sort of you know relationship while we were there you know um and you know she said you know some encouraging words and it's like this that and the third and i was like oh my god thank you so much um you know and it was just like a great little conversation that we had and then another young lady came out who's also who's also a recruiter and that also helped me engage with her as well so you know that helped as well you know so they really got to know who i was and i was able to know who they were um like i said i went inside i was like a social butterfly i got a seat you know at the front you want to sit in the front so i got a seat in the front and um i put my bag down and, um, you know, and then I just kind of mingled. I mingled with those around me first, you know, got their names, you know, just kind of talked a little bit. Um, you know, everybody says they're nervous, you know, of course, but don't let that, you know, kill your vibe. So then, you know, hop around, you know, like don't be afraid to walk around the room, you know, and just speak to other candidates. So that's what I did. Cause some people just kind of stayed in their seat. They didn't say anything, you know, like these people are watching, how are you going to be a flight attendant? And you're not saying nothing to the people that are around you. So I went to other people, you know, I spoke to them, you know, um, I literally hopped around the room and spoke to 
everybody y'all i cannot stress that enough please speak to just about everybody if you can whatever time they're allowing you to sit up there and chit chat and talk use that time to talk to other people and then when they say okay guys we're about to start then you make your way to your seat which is exactly what i did so um after that, you know, they got up to the front. They did like a spill or whatever. They told us, you know, something about the airline, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, they kind of split it up. So one person went first and then another recruiter went second to tell us the other half of the information. So they told us about the pay, you know, some of the benefits and, you know, things of that nature. Um, you know, how you're not allowed to uh, to commute your first year. You know, just a lot of the ins and outs, right? So um, about tattoo, their tattoo policy and everything. And they said, if you know, if this is still, if this is not something that you want to do, you know, you can leave at the end of this, right? So I know some people had gotten there before I got there and they were turned around because of tattoos. And then also too, um, after, after we had our little break or whatever, before we did our 60 second spill, she um a few people left so um, i would say we started off with maybe around 50 50 people or so and then it kind of dropped down to maybe about 30 something people in the room because of i guess tattoos or whatever other issues they were having right so like i said after they finished talking to us about everything about the company they told us that we would need to do a 60 second spiel as to why we would be a great flight attendant for skywest airlines so they said, we'll give you some time. I think they gave us like 30 minutes or so, maybe 45 minutes to um, come up with this 60 second spiel and then they'll go in order. Now, like I said, the order that they went in was the order that you came into the room. So um, I, lucky me, I was like second to the last person to go. I thought I was the last, but somebody supposedly came in after me. So I was second to the last. So I was like, I'm going to make this count. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm second to the last. They're going to remember me like I am the last person. So, you know, other y'all do not get up there and say, oh, I want to travel. Like, do not get up there and talk about, oh, well, I was, a, or I was a flight attendant for this company or that company or, you know, like no one cares. We all know that you're there for the benefits. We all know that. We do not care, you know, that you worked for another airline, what airline it was, what problems you had, what you loved. No one cares. Honey, they can see it on your resume. Okay. Like they have your resume in the back looking over it as you're doing your 60 seconds spiel. Okay. Sorry, my camera um, died. While you're there, you want to talk about your resume. You want to say the things that are on your resume. I have great customer service experience. You know, I've done this, this, and this. You know, tie it all into the position that you're actually there for, which is being a flight attendant. So, and you also want to talk about safety. Whatever it is, whatever other job you've had, you need to tie in some sort of safety or something you had to do at that job and tie it into your answer with you being a great flight attendant. You do not want to say you want to travel. Like I said, I will keep reiterating that. You do not want to say, oh, I just want to travel. That is not okay. So, like I said, there were, like, there were people who said all kinds of stuff, y'all. Like, some people said, oh, because, you know, I'm a great person and, you know, I want to travel. And, um, yeah, that's why I want to be a flight attendant. And I was like, you know, but, but while you're there, you keep a smile on your face. Your face will will hurt. That is fine. But you keep a smile on your face. And you. they said, hold your claps to the end. Please hold your claps to the end. They want to be sure that you can pay attention to detail and you can pay attention and follow directions. Okay? So, simple. Do not clap at, you know, while people are talking. You clap at the very, very end. Anyways, so like I said, you want to talk about safety. You want to talk about things that are on your resume, dealing with customer service. Um, and... You also want to say something about, you know, an exceptional experience, you know, whatever, whatever, something, you know, to keep the customer coming back, you know, something about, like I said, safety, you know, all of that you want to tie into a pretty little bow and make it seem as if you will be the best you know, flight attendant on earth, you know, and then also make sure your personality shows. Don't try to be anyone else, you know, be yourself. And I mean, and when I used to see that on, you know, all kinds of um, like, you know, on like Glassdoor or on other videos that I would watch, I would be like, okay, sure, everybody's saying be your faith, be yourself, but I mean, I guess. But when you get there, like, legit, just you know, be yourself, don't try and be anything that you're not. You know, it's it can, e you know, people can easily see through that kind of stuff. So, after we did our 60 second spiel, um, like I said, I was the second to the last person, I made it count, y'all. I'm telling you, make it count and keep it under 60 seconds if you go under, if you go over 60 seconds 
I'm not saying that you won't move forward, but I, all I'm saying is that do just follow directions. There is a reason for everything. So if they say keep it under 60 seconds, you keep it under 60 seconds. You can quickly bust that thing out, you know, in a good 20 seconds, 30 seconds max or something like that. If you have to get in the mirror, you know, talk to yourself, practice, time yourself, make sure you have that 60 second spill down to a T. Mine was not 60 seconds. Um, I, mine was like maybe 20, 25 seconds because I did kind of talk about uh, my education because I, I did, you know, if y'all see my other vlogs, whatever, I have gotten my master's degree in London. So I recently got back from London. So I used to live there for a year. So I entwined that into me being cultured, you know, me being around, you know, being able to adapt to different environments and, you know, me, you know, being well-rounded in travel. I didn't say travel, but I did just say I'm a well-rounded individual, but they knew what I meant, you know. So, um, so I did say, you know, those type of things and I did mention, you know, how I'm a military child, you know, so, you know, I've lived in several different countries, you know, those type of things, all of that kind of goes in with the flight attendant position. So uh, with that being said, it told a lot more about myself. So, you know, you want to tell as much as you can about yourself that that pertains to the position. I will reiterate that again that pertains to the position. You do not want to say something way left field that has nothing really to do with the position. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so um, like I said, I made a count and I also wore something that made me stand out as well. I did have, I was the only one with a nice little burgundy, you know, um, blazer on, you know, and I had the all black underneath, but still the burgundy vest helped me stand out. And I had my pearls on as well. well no, I had on these. Actually, I had on these. I had on this red lip. But my makeup just wasn't done, you know, like it is right now. But anyways, and I have my hair pulled back, as you can see right now. So, you know, that's how I presented myself. After we after we finished our 60-second 60, 60 spiel, her name is Miss Marie. She was like the very first recruiter that I had met. Really sweet lady. So, Miss Marie came up to the front and she said, you know, thank you. And she was like, um, I just want to, you know, um, say now that we will give you 40, a 45-minute 45 um, break. And during this time, we will select the ones that we wish to move forward for the face-to-face -face interview. And they said, if you did not move forward, you know, we want to thank you. And we invite you to come apply again um, in the next 60 days. Okay. So, um, cool. So, we all, you know, we were able to exit. We went downstairs, you know, and everybody was in the lobby. And, you know, I had got a lot of compliments. Like, oh, my God, like, you did so well. You did so well. You hit on this. You hit on that. Like, oh, my God, you did well. Like, I... I do pretty well under pressure so um i was kind of able to there were things i forgot to say that i really wanted to say but at the end of the day i made sure i hit a lot of the key points that sold me so um like i said you know and there were some other people that got up there and i felt like they did really well and there were some people that got up there and i was just like girl did you even come prepared like did you read up on the company did you read up on like how the experience was going to be like you could tell those or who who were prepared and those who weren't prepared but anyway, so, um, yeah, so we just kind of talked about, you know, like, who else we had applied for and, you know, all of that good stuff. And, um, yeah, you know, from there, um, we went upstairs maybe like 10 minutes early, you know, chit-chatting, talking still for the 10 minutes while we were up there standing. And they were, they were a little late. Nothing against them. Because they were supposed to give us our results at 8.10. So it was around 7-ish. Like I said, they started right on time at 6.00. After we did the 60 second spill, we got 45 minutes of a break. So our report time back was at 8.10. So um, the, um, I think they po they posted them maybe like 8.20, 8.15ish, 8 something like that. Um, it wasn't right on time, which was fine. So um, then they, you know, they just posted it up on the door, whatever door it was that we walked in where we had, you know, our spills and stuff done. We, um we just you know they posted it on that door so we all kind of ran up and y'all i kid you not i was like freaking out i was like oh my god i don't see my name i don't see my name and i was down i was like the second to the last person i'm like what is up with this position so i was second to the last person on the list and i was like whoo thank god so i went in and they said all of those whose names are on the list you need to go inside and you just have a seat and then we'll give you further instructions and everybody else you know you could you know you're excused to go home so um out of the 30 something people i think only 12 of us made it 
So it wasn't even half. Um, a dude said he actually counted how many people were on the list and he said he counted 12. Um, I'll also insert a few clips as well um, as far as, you know, why I was there at the training. Like the people were so nice, they were so cool. Okay, so all of us came inside. And once again, this all goes back to the, the time that you came into the event. So they also still go in that order, right? So since I was the second to the last person, I ended up being the second to the last person on this list as well because the lady behind me when we did our 60 seconds fill um, also got moved forward to the face to face. So I was the second to the last person there and while we were there we um, were all in the same room you know we just kind of discussed we talked a lot you know and each recruiter took one person with them. So the first three people had to go ahead and you know go with the recruiters while the rest of us stay in the room. So, um, you know, we were just kind of chit chatting and talking and, you know, we were just, you know, I don't know, we talked about some of everything, you know, it, we, it was just, you know, a really good bond and it was certain people was like, oh my God, they didn't make it. Like, how could they not make it? And then there were some people in that room that made it to the face to face and I was like, how did you make it here? But that's neither here or there. You know, I'm not a recruiter, so, you know, I have no say so in that. But like I said, it was just, you know, it was just shocking to some of the people that made it. And it was shocking for those that didn't. I know one girl in particular, she did happen to say Southwest instead of Skywest. So I didn't catch it, but I know other people said that they caught it. And she didn't make it to the face-to-face. -face. Like, she did really, really good at pitching, but I think that might have been what got her. And like I said, there were other people who talked about other things. And I was just like, girl, some people say they want to travel and they still made it to the face-to-face. -face. Um, and one and another girl, she talked about an old airline that she used to work with, another regional airline. And I was like, girl, don't do that. And she didn't make it to the face-to-face. -face. So that's why I'm saying, please don't go in there and talk about another job that you had at another airline. But anyway, so... Um, so yeah, oh, they also gave us, um, I will also say too, that while they, at the very, very beginning, when they were telling us about the company, at the very, very end of them telling us about the company, they asked us, do you have any questions? Be sure to ask a question. Like I told you before, I went in, I sat on the front row, so I recommend you sitting on the front row, um, and you need to ask at least one question. So this is another way to get your face out in front of the classroom and especially the recruiters. So that way that you stand out. You know, you want to make sure you ask like a very valid question. You know, even if you already technically know the answer to it, you like you've looked it up yourself and you know the answer, still just be sure that you ask the question. Like me personally, my question is almost always, um, how quickly can I move up the ladder as far as, you know, if I wanted to switch positions and be in corporate or something like that? Like, you know, what is the um, rate that I could move at or what is the soon as I could move up or, you know, something of that nature is usually what I tend to ask. And it's a pretty valid question. Um, I had already knew a few other people had already told me, but that's fine. You know, I still asked the question. I was still able to stand up once again, mention my name and get in front of the recruiters faces. So, um, but anyway, so like I said, back to the room with us, you know, just being in there waiting for us to be interviewed. Um, I made a group me and all of us to this day are in the group me together and you know we were just making sure we did you know uh, kept in touch you know said encouraging words and stuff like that they did also let us know that training will be May 30th so they said we will give you two weeks you know um, two weeks you know let your current employer know that you know you will be um, going to training so um, yeah like I said we sat in the room for a while and when I say it took a while it took a while and um and when i went in there the questions that she was asking hold on one minute so um i wrote a few of them down so one of the questions was what is your strongest weakness so this particular question you know you always want to make it if it's a weakness make it like a good weakness so i said that for me um, it's being so too trusting that was I felt was my strongest weakness and I kind of elaborated on it or whatever but you know being a trusting person is you know a good thing you know you the company wants to know that they're able to trust you so um, another question is what kind of personality do I dislike the most so with this right here I didn't really have much of an answer I just kept you know I was saying like oh you know I get along with so many different people you know like um, I pretty much just adapt to whatever type of person that I'm dealing with. And the lady was like, well, I need you to, you know, you need to tell me something, some type of, you know, personality that you don't like. And I was like, maybe someone who just isn't willing to understand. Um, someone, you know, I'm trying to, you know, get them to understand the situation or get them to, you know, um, 
just just trying to get them to understand anything and you know if you know then you have some people out there that just aren't willing to try and understand something or you know whatever the case may be so i ended up saying that would be you know i guess the personality that i would dislike the most um they asked me did i have any tattoos i told them no i didn't um they asked me was i willing to relocate i told them yes um and they said, um, what did you enjoy most about your last job or current job? So um, I told them that my last job was like a, re like a registration officer at my old school in London. So um, um, I just pretty much told them, like I said, once again, tied into the position. Um, I told them that, you know, being able to help, you know, others um, and send a smile, put in their face, you know, um, give them a great experience. Um, you know, uh, ensure them of their safety there at the school um, and in London, you know, if they're a foreign student and, you know, just all of that. So that's kind of how I put it, you know, into a nice little bow. I talked about customer service and safety. Like those are top. Safety one, customer service two. So I definitely, and you know, put everything together. Another question they asked was, they asked, they made me read an announcement and it was something about, you know, please buckle your seatbelts. We're about to take off. Something, something of that nature. And then um, the question was, um, she gave, like I said, she, it was like a little card. She gave it to me. She said, "Can you please read this out loud?" So I read it, and then she took it back. And then that's when she asked this question. She said, um, um, "What if a guy was putting his stuff in the overhead bin? What would I say to him?" And we, and the flight is about to take off. Like, after I said the announcement, she was saying, what if, after I said the announcement, the guy gets up and tries to put his um, stuff in the bin? So, um, I told her that I would politely, you know, go to him and just express to him, you know, um, his safety is our top priority. Um, so, just, you know, could, you know, we cannot move forward until you are, you have safely fastened your seatbelt and, you know, everything is stowed away. So, that's pretty much how I said it. I believe that's how I worded it. Um, something of that nature so at the, at the end of the day you want to make sure you still keep incorporating safety in there so that's how I did it um, they also to um, when we got into the room and we got and that's how we knew we had gotten to the face-to-face -face, um, they also gave us a sheet of paper and on that sheet of paper they just had like a few questions um, I think it asked for like easy jet stuff on one side so if you weren't like um, a previous employee with them you would just put NA on all of them and then the front part it asked you for like your name your address and stuff it asks you what would be the closest domicile to um, wherever you live for me it would be Atlanta so um so they can get like tickets and stuff like that together and you know it just asks me about like tattoos am I willing to relocate all of that stuff again um and it asks us a few other questions I can't remember exactly what it was saying but it wasn't anything you know it wasn't really really like it wasn't like any of these type of questions you know that they would ask you during the face-to-face -face. it wasn't anything like that it was just information they needed to know um just in case you did get a cjo they would know how to get things in order for you so um yeah so like i said i just got it today around three um my cjo so um you know a lot of us in the group i don't know if anybody didn't get one um I haven't quite went back and looked to see. I know a few people haven't said anything, so I'm not quite sure what's going on with them. But they also haven't said anything throughout the whole time we've had the group chat. So I'm not quite sure. But um, And I didn't again, I don't want to be like, hey, did you get one? And, you know, they didn't get one. So I was like, I, they'll say it whenever they're ready to say it. So, um, so yeah, so like I said, right now, training starts May 30th. Um, I do have a face-to-face -face with friends here. I will be filming that as well. My face-to-face -face with them is on May 24th, so um, six days before um, SkyWest's training starts. So we'll see how that goes. I'm still kind of undecided right now. I don't really know who I want to go with or what I want to do. Um, and I also just finished a virtual interview with Envoy. Um, as you can see, I am kind of done up. So I did just finish that interview. We'll see how that goes as well. So um, I will make other videos um, about some of, some of the other companies that I did um, apply for and some of the questions that I was asked in those virtual interviews as well. So I'm hoping that this information helps someone out there, you know, like I was helped when I was going through this process. So um, I just want to say, you know, I'll see you all in the skies and good luck and go get your wings, everyone. Bye.